All right, so today is July the 2nd. Uh, Monday is July the 4th. So I decided to, to cook, do a little cooking today. I'm gonna smoke some ribs and some and a Boston butt. And so I thought I figured uh, since I'm doing that, I'll give you a quick rundown on how I go about that process. So this is my smoker. I've had this thing for a while. It's a uh, char grill professional grill and smoker. Uh, you probably see them around at Lowe's and Home Depot, maybe in Walmart. They've been out for a while. Mine's got a few modifications to it. I changed out the wheels, um, added this smokestack on there, um, inverted the little, it came with a, a pan for holding the coals, flipped it over and turned it upside down, kind of as a heat diverter. Um, so when the heat comes out of the firebox here and goes through the little opening in there it runs along the whole surface and gives a little bit better even more even heat I also put this little pan in there fill it with a little water keep a little moisture in there uh, what else did I do I added some different thermometers on there that are a little more accurate than the one that comes with it and then I added this little aluminum smokestack extension that that puts the smokestack even with the grill surface so lets that smoke stay in there as long as it can before it escapes through the smokestack so those are the kind of the modifications I really did to it but uh, you know that's nothing too fancy also I think I added some fiberglass rope which some of it's come off but I had some fiberglass rope around the side in the back to kind of seal it off yeah there's still some there you can see uh, to kind of seal off the smoke keep it all inside so anyway so my typical process is I'll, I'll I've got a basket I changed I did actually built a different fire basket too uh, than the one that came in it but uh, so what you can see here is I fill my basket with unlit coal I use the hardwood lump charcoal typically this uh, royal oak stuff I can get it at like Walmart or wherever I got some of this cowboy I think it's cowboy lump charcoal in there too but uh, so I fill it around with this unlit coal and then I put this little spacer I think this is actually a piece of stainless steel pipe that I got from work or something but I'll put that in the center and fill all the way around it with unlit coal and then I'll light coal over here in my chimney get it good and, and lit then dump it down in the center of that opening and then yank that spacer out and that way the unlit coal gets lit by the lit coal seems to burn longer that way uh, I think there's a name for that process don't remember but that's how I get it lit and then I control the temperature by the air vent on the end there so that's the process I use for the cooking so I'm gonna go in in a little bit and get the meat ready I got uh, some ribs and a, and a butt that I'm gonna put on here so I'm going to go in and get those ready here in just a little bit and I'll All show right, you how to do the that. the coals on. Temperature is slowly rising. We're a little over 150 degrees. And I got the firebox lit there. So we'll get the meat on here shortly. Let it come up to about two and a quarter. Probably let it rise just above two and a quarter. Maybe closer to 250 before I put the meat on just so it'll because uh, it'll cool down so I'm going to do that. Uh, I'll be using uh, some apple. I got uh, some apple chunks in there and some pecan. I got a little bit of pecan I scavenged from a tree that was recently cut down. So I got a little bit here, small piece, and I got, I got plenty more. Um, got it soaking in water there. Uh, some people say you don't need to do that. Some people say you do. Uh, I think it just helps the wood not flare up so bad, uh, makes it smoke maybe a little bit longer. So that's what I got there. So I'll be using some apple and uh, a little pecan. So once the temperature gets up, we'll put the meat on and I'll show you the process of that and show you what kind of rub I'm going to be using this All time. Alright, so the, the rub I'm going to use this time is called Perfect Bite Barbecue, Perfect Bite Butt Polish. Uh, says this for the perfect butt for the per oh wait the perfect butt for the perfect bite 
this is uh, a different one. I saw it at the store today. Uh, it's made up the road here in Trustville, Alabama. So I figured I'd try local local folks uh, product. It says they've been uh, in business for over 50 years and doing business in the south making uh, I guess doing different different things in the barbecue business so um, we're gonna give their product a try I've used several other rubs uh, Bad Byron's is one that I kinda like um, uh, there's a Fiesta butt rub that I get at the local Academy Sports but we're gonna try perfect bite barbecues butt polish on this one and see how it turns out. I'm also going to put that on the ribs too, so we'll see how that turns out. All right, I got the meat on and got the smoker slowly coming back up to temperature. Uh, almost ran out of room, as you can see here. Uh, got three slabs of beef or three slabs of ribs and the butt on there came real close to run out of room. So I had to trim the ribs just a little bit to get uh, to get it all fit in there, but we're all good. So I'm gonna close that up, let the temperature come back up and stabilize a little bit, and then uh, and it's just time to wait. So I got other things I'm gonna be doing. So I'll keep an eye on it the rest of the day. Got a little yard work to do and some other stuff. But uh, the way I cook these, and you can look this up on the internet. It's uh, Called it for the rib, it's called a 3 2 1 method. Uh, so you do three hours in the smoker like it is now at about two and a quarter uh, degrees with your smoking wood in there, and, and just this is where you get the smoke flavor in. Then after three hours, you pull it and um, pull them and wrap them in uh, heavy foil and put them back on for two more hours with them wrapped. You can put a little apple juice or a little pineapple juice or something in the foil with them to give them a little moisture. And then one hour, and then pull them off after that, after two hours in the foil, and you pull them off and put them back on the smoker for one hour uh, to finish them off. So three hours unwrapped, two hours wrapped, and then one more hour unwrapped to finish them off. Uh, I've done them that way before, they turned out really well. Now, as far as the butt goes, I'll just leave it on there the whole time. Uh, after about four or five hours, uh, I'll probably put. Um, my thermometer, I've got a remote thermometer with a probe that I'll put in there after four or five hours or so uh, and just to see what the temperature is and then I'll monitor it until it gets up around 200 degrees, 200, 205, uh, then I'll let it kind of sit for a little bit longer and then I'll pull it off and it'll be done. So that's the butt. Uh, again, I'm using uh, this, uh, this perfect bite butt polish that I got made up in Trustful, Alabama. Uh, it's got sugar, salt, paprika, spices, onion and garlic, uh, paprika extract, some smoke flavor, and then of course your typical silicon dioxide to prevent caking, whatever that is. But um, it's in Trustful, so uh, they're made in Trustful, so I'm going to give it a shot this time. We'll see. I'll let you know how it turns out. So uh, check back in here in a little while, let you see how it's doing down the road. But I got some grass to cut. Alright, it's been about right at three hours. So we're going to pull up the ribs off and wrap them in some foil. Put just a little bit of apple juice in with them. And put them back on and get them cooking again. So we're going to do that real quick. And get that, get it back on. Alright, that's one slab there of ribs and then we get two slabs of St. Louis style. And while we're in here we're gonna flip the butt over. And add a little bit of water to the water pan. close that back while I'm getting these wrapped up and not waste that heat. So we're going to take a make us a little, a little bit of apple juice. Pour over 
Mikrofon. Give them a little moisture. Sealed up in the. Don't foil wrap with them. these up in this heavy duty aluminum foil. Let's get these back on here. There we go. So, put those on there for two hours. And then we'll come back and unwrap them. All right. Put so them back on for a final hour. Two hours. Uh, it's been two hours. And it's time to take the ribs off and unwrap them. My daughter has come home from work. and. Follow me on Instagram or Twitter at abspoid, A-B-B-S-B-O-I-D. She's advertising her, apparently she's advertising her Instagram and Twitter feed or whatever that is. Oh, that made a mess. I think I poked a hole in that one. Alright, so. Oh yeah, those look good. So we're going to unwrap these. Get them back on there on a smoker. Ooh, 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 hot, hot, hot. Oh, this is looking good. Looking good. Ooh, that's hot. Okay. Right, while I have this open, I'm going to go ahead and put my temperature probe into into my Boston butt. This is a I think this is made by Maverick. It's a ready check smoker. It's a remote tent probe. I'm going to put that right into the middle of meat. So, what this does is it gives me, a, I got a remote sensor here that'll give me the temperature of the smoker as well as the meat. So I'll leave this out here and then I'll take this inside. I can keep an eye on the temperature. Uh, the butt's at 152 degrees right now and I got to put a little more coal on the, on the firebox here to get it back up to temp. Because it's dropped down some. It's only showing 120, but I had it open for a few minutes. So I'm going to add some fire to that here in just a minute and get it back up to temperature. All right, there. Last hour's up. Actually, I ran them a little bit longer than I should have. But, uh, so it's been about an hour and 20 minutes. But, uh, we're gonna, so we're going to pull these off. And we're going to, uh, Probably slather them up with some uh, barbecue sauce. And get into them and see how they taste. I'd say they're looking pretty good. Oh yeah, those are looking yummy. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this uh, butt off of here. Got the ribs all wrapped up inside. They turned out spectacular. Uh, it's getting pretty late, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this butt pulled. Get it in the house. Oh, that's looking good there. We'll get that inside. Let it uh, rest for a little bit. And pull it all apart. And I'm sure it'll be just fantastic. That's what she looks like. 
if you can see it, but it's got as dark as it is out here. I don't know if you can see it, but one thing left is to pull it apart and wrap it up and eat it. So we'll probably do that for the fourth. I'll probably warm it back up for the fourth and have that ready to go uh, for lunch on Monday. So hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, got something useful uh, out of it on how I do uh, barbecue. And if you got any questions or comments, um, just post them in the comments below. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks. See ya.